Hey everybody, so this video hopefully will be a brief one about the trichromatic, trichromatic theory of color perception um, and how the activity of the different cones combine to give us the perception or, uh, or give us the signal that our brain interprets as different colors. All right, so first, some things to understand. One, the trichromatic theory argues that our perception of um, color is dependent upon the relative activities across three or three different kinds of cones. We have a cone that is primarily responsive to short wavelength light, a cone that is primarily responsive to medium wave uh, to medium wavelength light, and a cone that is primarily responsive to long wavelength light. Now I'm going to show you the absorption spectrums here in a little bit, and it's going it's not it's not evenly spaced, but in general, um, each cone is more responsive to one level or uh, 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 one wavelength of light more than it is others. All right. <clears throat> now, um, so things for you to review if you're not following along. Go back and look at the relationship between uh, wavelengths of light and uh, color. Um, um, and then go once you've reviewed that come back and watch this video all right so let's talk about what an absorption spectrum is so I'm going to show you a plot of the absorption spectrums for each of our cones so here is the absorption spectrum of our short wavelength cone the absorption spectrum of our medium wavelength cone and the absorption spectrum of our long wavelength cone now um, in one, in the other, in another video I have where I talk about the scotopic and photopic vision, I mentioned uh, that in general your cones are more responsive to long wavelength light than uh, short wavelength light. And so you might ask yourself, well, what about this cone? W um, when you see a spectral sensitivity curve for photopic vision, it, you can think of it roughly as an average of these three absorption spectrums. So it pushes, it pulls it this way, all right? Whereas the absor is a bloop, 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 absorption spectrum for rods is about right here. It's not on this graph, but I'm trying to, hopefully you can see my mouse and you can see me tracing it out. Now, because it's not an average of uh, three dramatically different absorpt absorption spectrums, it stays right there. But when you average these three, it pulls it up here. All right. Now, <clears throat> um, according to the trichromatic theory of color perception, in order for us to see, let's say, uh, green, for example, we see green, or our brain interprets green, when it gets a specific pattern of activity from all three cones. So let's take 500 nanometers here. All right. Well, all we have to do is draw a line. So let's do that. Let's draw a line. Straight up from 500 nanometers. Let's make that a little bit more visible. How's that? Maybe make it black. There we go. Okay. Now, so we've drawn a line straight up from 500 nanometers. Now, all we have to do is identify where this line crosses each of these curves. So, I realized I didn't describe exactly what these curves meant. I've called them an absorption spectrum. What does that mean? Well, each of your cones react and absorb photons from different wavelengths of light, better or worse. So in each of these curves, we can identify what wavelengths each cone absorbs more of. So your short wavelength cone absorb, absorbs a lot of light, about 419 nanometers. And then as the wavelength of light go, gets shorter than that or longer than that, that cone absorbs less and less and less of it. As, as the wavelength gets longer and less and less and less of it as the wavelength gets shorter. Your, media, your medium wavelength cone responds best to about 530 
uh, nanometers. And as the wavelength of light gets shorter than that, it responds less, it absorbs fewer of its photons. And as the wavelength gets longer than that, it absorbs less, it reacts less, it <coughs> absorbs fewer of the photons. And your, low, your long wavelength uh, cones, it absorbs best around 560 nanometers. So as the wavelength of light gets lower than that, it absorbs less of that light. And as the wavelength gets longer than that, it absorbs uh, fewer photons. So going back to seeing green. So we've drawn this line here at 500 nanometers at Greenland. Our brain sees green when we uh, get activity that represents your medium wavelength cone absorbing about 75% of the light, your long wavelength cone absorbing about just over 50% of that light, and your short wavelength cone absorbing uh, about 10% of that light. These are proportions multiplying by 100 any other percentage. So we can just draw some additional lines here. Actually, I'm just going to copy this one and move them around. All right, so it's a little over 75. All right, copy that and paste that. Where it crosses over the long wavelength cone, just over 50. And where it crosses over the short wavelength cone. Again, uh, those lines are a little angled. But you can see um, that it's a little over 75% that the medium wavelength cone absorbs a little over 75% of 500 nanometer light, the long wavelength cone absorbs a little over 50% of 500 nanometer light, and your short wavelength cone absorbs about 10% of 500 nanometer light. So we have this pattern of absorption from all three cones. When your brain gets a signal saying, hey, we have 75% absorption from your medium wavelength, 50% activation or 60, 55% activation from your long wavelength and about 10% activation from your uh, short wavelength, your brain recognizes that as that's green. So it creates the perception of green. All right. And that's essentially how color perception works according to the trichromatic theory of color perception. So in this video, we've covered what an absorption spectrum is the trichromatic theory of color perception, and we've gone through an example of how the trichromatic theory of color perception explains how we see different colors. If we were to go back to this graph, <clears throat> we could explain how we uh, see every color according to the trichromatic theory. All we have to do is move this line. So let's say we wanted to see uh, what pattern of activation across the three cones leads us to see yellow. Well, all we have to do flatten out, is extend these lines and then move them to where they cross. So let's extend these lines first. All right, now let's move them to where they cross. Oh, and the short wavelength cone doesn't cross here at all, so. So now, to see yellow, we uh, your brain would interpret yellow when, it ha when it's getting about 90% activation from your long wavelength cones and just over 50% of activation from your uh, medium wavelength cones. Now I know I, I've used some words kind of interchangeably like activation or absorption, but in general the relationship is the more light that a cone or really any visual receptor, the more light that it absorbs, the more it reacts. So the greater the absorption, the greater the reaction. Um, so when I, so you can kind of think of them as being very highly related. As absorption increases, so does uh, the reaction of the of the of the uh, ganglion. All right. So again, we've talked about uh, what an absorption spectrum is. We've talked about the trichromatic theory of color perception, and we've gone through some examples of of how uh, we might see different colors of light 
because of the, act, the activation across the three colors or the three types of cones. And that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please send them my way. Other than that, I hope you have, uh, uh, I hope this uh, video has been informative and I'll see you all later on.